Thank you very much. You may be seated. This next case is Cinderella versus the Step Family. Cinderella is suing the Step Family for neglect, verbal, and emotional abuse, embezzlement of funds, destruction of property, and breaking child labor laws. The Step Family is countersuing for slender theft, pain, and suffering, and animal abuse. The lawyer will represent the forward, please. And you're representing whom? I'm the Step Family's lawyer, Your Honor. You're new to this courtroom, aren't you? I can always tell a newbie. Well, I know, Your Honor. B.B. Wolf, attorney at law. I was involved in a case here with you a while back. I see, I see. And you did win. Why else would I be standing here before you today? So you always get your man, huh? We'll see, we'll see. And this is your mother you brought with you. Er, uh, no, Your, your Honor. My mother's more of a backwoods type. This would be the lawyer for Cinderella. Ah, uh, yes. I know you went over Miss Hubbard, so you're busy doing legal work to keep that cupboard full? Actually, it's Mrs. Shiano. It was my first time in the cupboard. After all my children grew up and got the boot, I decided it's my turn. I want a good pay to fun VS Guy vacation. So I became a court reporter. Then I studied law in night school, and I'm a four-time attorney. This case caused the internship because it concerned abuse of a child, and that's one thing I know it's children. You may begin your opening statements. Pain, suffering, abandonment, abuse. This is what made up Cinderella's daily life. Her mother died when she was just a baby, and her father died a few short years later, leaving, alone, leaving her alone with her stepmother, who was jealous of her and treated her like a slave. She was first to wear rags, sleep by the fireplace, and do all the housework. Her stepsisters made fun of her, and her stepmother neglected her. Even after escaping, my client still has emotional scars to bear. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, bring the perpetrators of these hideous crimes to justice by finding the favor of my client. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, don't judge a book by its cover. We're all familiar with Cinderella's rags to riches story, but we don't know the real behind the scenes story from the people who lived it with her. It's a dog eat dog room. Just because Cinderella is a beautiful princess, that does not make her right. Sometimes there is cruelty behind an innocent face, just as there can be innocent gentility behind a furry face. I encourage you to look beyond the surface and into the grim reality of betrayal that my clients have suffered. You may call your first witness. I call Cinderella to the stand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help your brothers and him? I do. Tell us in your words what your life was like living with your step family. Well, at first it wasn't so bad when daddy was still alive. But after daddy died, my stepmother had changed. She made me do all the housework while the daughters did no chores at all. They teased me and made more work for me. They used up all the money my father had left behind for me. I was orphaned and had no choice but to stay with my step family. I had no place to go. Hey there, sweetie, can you tell us the night of the ball? <laughs> well, the invitation was for everyone, and I asked to go. But my stepmother made sure I had so many chores that there was no way I'd be able to go to the ball. If it weren't for my fairy godmother, I would have never made it there. Did the fairy godmother alter you in any way? Oh, no. Not me personally. She just made the lovely gown after my mother's silk dress was ruined by my stepsisters. She gave me the silver slippers and the coach to get there, but that was all. How did your step how did your stepsisters bring your mother's silk dress? Oh, it was awful. They tore it to shreds. It was the only thing I had left of my mother's belongings. I still have nightmares about it today. I'll never forget it. They ripped it right off my body. And because of that, to this day, I suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder. Oh, you poor child. Thank you for having the courage just to share with us today. No further questions. Now, Cinderella, you were given regular meals, a room of your own, with a fireplace, and a family to live with after the tragic death of your father. Is that correct? 
I didn't have my own bedroom. It was a bed put in the family room by the smelly old fireplace. Wasn't it one of your chores to clean the fireplace? Well, yes. Then whose fault was it that you were smelly? Mine, I suppose. Were there any other bedrooms available? No. So you had a private room with a fireplace in a, in a, while your stepsister had to share a cold room. Did you ever balk at the chores you were asked to do? Yes, I did, when I was suddenly doing all the housework. Griselda and Portabella did nothing! Your poor widowed stepmother took you in and gave you a home with a private room and a fireplace. They, your stepfamily could have sent you into foster care, but they took you in. Your stepsister, stepsisters willingly shared their mother with you, and after all they did for you, you were only do a few simple house chores to help them out? It wasn't like that. They were mean to me, and they should have to pay for that. They are fatherless and live in poverty, while you married into the royal and will live, will live in a castle happily ever after. But you still want them to suffer more? They tore up the one dress just so I couldn't go to the ball. Yet by magic, you managed to get there anyway. And why did your stepsisters tear up your dress? As I already stated, just so I couldn't go to the ball. Oh, really? Do you recognize these? Those are the decorations they ripped off my dress. That's right. Decorations that didn't belong to you. Bobbies you stole from your stepsisters without permission. I found them in a wastebasket. You stole them from a storage container without asking. Your stepsisters willingly sh you your stepsisters willingly took merely took back what was rightfully theirs. They threw those things out as trash. You're not telling it right. That's not fair. Fair, yes. Let's talk about fair, shall we? You had a magically woven, amazing gown and silver slippers the likes which here have never seen. You had an enchanted coach and coachman, and you used the unfair of magic to, to replace your dress and give you an unfair advantage over all the other girls at the ball. Don't whine to me about fair. And wasn't it one of your chores to feed your stepfamily's cat? Yes. You over, you, you over, that cat is horribly obese. You overfed their beloved cat, deliberately knowing it would shorten poor Lucy Four's life. Lucifer? Did somebody say Lucifer? Lucy Four, Your Honor, the fourth cat named Lucy. It's not familiar, is it? It looks familiar. It's just a rare cat, Your Honor. I'll talk about magic and Lucifer's giving me the heebie-jeebies. Please, let's move on. Did you feed the beast too much in order to shorten its life? Lucy Four would have run away anyway. All the others did. Nobody wanted to live there if they had a way out. That cat couldn't run away from anything. Why, if she tried, she wouldn't get 10 feet before I pounced on her and had a nice, tasty, plump afternoon snack. Er, not that I would, or what I mean to say is, Lucy Four is perfectly happy there in spite of your attempts to threaten her life. You used black magic to get the prince to love you, and you are now a rich princess. Yet you are still so petty that you have to make your stepmommy suffer to take away the few remaining things they have. No further questions. You may step back. Your Honor, I decree that the plaintiff failed to prove da damages. The defense therefore requests judgment. Can you do that? Well then, let's see. The cat's fat, no doubt about that. Ooh, I made a rhyme. The prom dress issue, well, that's a bit foggy there. Then there's whether or not the fairy godmother used magic to change the girl or just her situation. Hmm, Mr. Wolf, Mrs. Shoe, approach the bench. Your move for judgment is overruled. Do you have any further witnesses? No, Your Honor. Let me call your next witness. I call Adrian Payne, Cinderella's stepmother to the stand. Pain. Tell the court how you met Cinderella. Well, I was just coming off of a relationship when I met her father. He was quite charming and we ended up getting married. Cinderella was part of the deal. I agreed to accept the daughter when I married the father. Isn't it true that you have continued to clothe, feed, and house Cinderella to this day, even though her father died years ago? Yes, I have. 
We not only share a home with her, we allow her to keep her pets there, too. This must be difficult for you, a widow raising three children on her own. It's not easy, but I do the best I can. And how did you feel when you found out Cinderella was suing you? It was a slap in the face. I know that compared to her life in the palace, her life with us was hard. But she has everything now. She's a princess, she's rich. So why would she want to take away from us what little we have left? It hurt us all very, very deeply. I know this story has been told by many people over the years, but it's always told in Cinderella's favor. We can't afford to hire Hollywood directors and famous animators to tell our side of the story. So everybody just hears and sees what Cinderella wants them to believe. But I think you're smarter than that. I'm sure that they are. I know your daughters are also here to testify about this travesty of justice. I won't prolong your suffering. No further questions. Your witness. Cinderella's father is fairly rich. What happened to all that money? We used most of it on the girls. Cinderella's father had spoiled her rotten. She's a pretty thing, I suppose. And my daughters, well, they're beauty challenged, you see. And. Hey, I heard that! How rude! Order! We had to get braces for Griselda and correct if she was a portabella. Then there were the laser eye surgeries, so neither of the girls would have to wear glasses. Regular dermatologist appointments and the rest of the money not used around the household has been set aside for cosmetic surgery. My daughters come of age. I am not getting plastic surgery! Cinderella doesn't need any of these things done. I only wanted what was best for my daughters. Wouldn't any mother want that? But didn't he leave that money for Cinderella in his will? He never took the time to have a proper will made. So everything that was his came to me. I saw to it that Cinderella had what she needed. But no. I'm sure to her it felt harsh, but I did the best I could by her. And I was a grieving widow myself. The best you could with her? You just run rags my daughter and fine dresses. I dressed her in rags only while she did her chores. Few chores are all I asked for. My poor dears are just too fragile to do housework. Griselda is allergic to dust mites, and Portabella gets dizzy smelling toilet bowl cleaners. So yes, I let them wear their pretty dresses around the house. It's good for their self-esteem. You gave Cinderella no time off and no way to go to the ball. Nonsense! I told her that she could go to the ball as soon as she was done with the chores. Few chores are all I asked of her. She chose to lollygag, and that's not my fault. She wasn't ready to go when we left, but the castle's just up, just up the hill and not a long walk from the house. Why should my daughters be made to suffer because Cinderella dragged defeat about doing her chores? She had no friends. You let her run around with rodents. Those were her pets. Did you even read her at night? I would have, but she had lice. Obje and I was afraid it would spread if I got too close. Objection, you're all irrelevant. Objection sustained. Omit the part about lice. You don't have them now, do you? Good. Continue. Isn't it true that she was supposed to sleep in ashes while your daughter had a bedroom? She had her own room, what used to be the family room, and slept by the fireplace so she was nice and warm. But you put the fire out every night. Well, yes, for fire, safe, for fire safety reasons, but the radiant heat would warm her for hours. Cold ashes, you left her in cold ashes. What kind of mother are you? I'm utterly disgusted. I just can't even look at you now. No further questions. You may call your next witness. I call Charming Prince to the stand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help your brothers Graham? But of course. Isn't it true that the ball was thrown so you can find a wife? Yes, it is. And is it the ball that you thrown and fell in love with Cinderella? Bug. I confess, I've met many princesses in my time, but Cindy is the love of my life, I can assure you. She is the cream in my coffee, the icing on my cake, the salsa on my tamale. You put salsa on your tamale? You use it instead of the meat sauce or add on? Oh, I add it, of course. I have this wonderful recipe. I'll be happy to share. Well, thank you. Would anyone else like a copy? We have a printer in the back. Uh -huh. Can we see with the questions, Your Highness? Yes. Was it the dress you fell in love with or just the girl? Well, as I said before, Cindy is all my life. I can assure you that. Oh, true love. No further questions. Okay. Hmm. Haven't I seen you before? 
Aren't you the prince I saw with Sleeping Beauty not too long ago? Shh, he doesn't know yet. Is that a yes? Yes, but it was meaningless, I can assure you. So the divorce was final before you married Cinderella. You were married to her? <clears throat> now, now, dear. It was nothing, really. It was annulled, if you must know. She kept falling asleep on me. Oh, and weren't you also a Snow White? It was just a couple of chance meetings. We were never serious. You told me I was your one true love, you cat! You are! We had hours to get to know each other before we got married. Those other girls were mostly wake-up kisses and a couple of dances. You've got to believe me. None of the others meant a thing to me. Just how many others were there? I like to plead the fifth, Your Honor. <laughs> You can play fifth with them, but you still gotta answer to me, buddy. No further questions. Cinderella, honey, please control yourself. Order! <laughs> can we have a brief recess?
back in session. Uh. You may call your first witness. I call Paige to the stand. Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you, Brother Scrim? Yes, I do. Isn't it true that you went from house to house with a silver slipper, putting on all of the maidens in the kingdom, trying to sniff out who had lost it? Yes, that's true, and let me tell you, when you say lost it, you're not kidding. She really lost it that night. I think she may have a phobia or clocks or something. Because as soon as the clock struck midnight, she completely wigged out. I'm talking loony bin material here. Ran off hair, left the prince standing there, ran off hair flying everywhere, didn't even stop to get her shoe. Pers no, she was practically forming at the mouth. Personally, I think she's a total psycho. But you know, if that's what your highness is into, far be it from me too. I was referring to the slipper. We're in going place to place with a silver slipper putting on all of it. Attempting to find the girl who had lost it. Oh, uh, yes. Yes, I was. And isn't it true that right before you tried the shoe on Cinderella, you tricked and broke it into hundreds of pieces? Well, so obviously, it was only a silver plate and not the real thing. But she had the other slipper in her pocket. She had a slipper in her pocket, but who's to say it was the real match? Without both slippers, we have no way of knowing for sure. Of course, the shoe she pulled from her pocket would fit her, but that wasn't the shoe she'd been trying on all of the other girls, now was it? No, but it was a perfect match. Well, she did have a fairy godmother at her disposal, so she could have conjured something last minute. No further question. Your witness? Do you know of any shoe cobblers who can make silver slippers like those Cinderella had? Cobbler? Cobbler? What kind? Peach? Apple? That's my favorite. Where is it? Can we get it now? Is there whipped cream? Not that kind of cobbler, Your Honor. Oh. What was your question again? Do you know of any shoe cobblers who can make silver slippers like those Cinderella had? No. Did you see a fairy godmother anywhere nearby when you were at her home? No. Nobody knew I would be there. In your opinion, would there have been enough time between the ball and your visit for her to have shoes like those specially made out of town? Certainly not. Which leads to the conclusion that the only way she could have that, that sh the shoe that day was if she carried it from the night before when she wore it at the ball. No further questions. You may call your next witness. I'd like to call to the stand His Majesty the King. Certainly. Now, Your Majesty, please, please tell the court your impression of Cinderella and her stepfamily when they came to your ball. I invited all of the girls in the kingdom to the ball, of course. We were wife shopping for my son. It's time he got married and took over around here. We're also thrilled with Cindy here. Those other two girls, her stepsisters, would have really an option. Thank you. No further questions. Your Majesty, isn't it true that your son danced with only Cinderella all evening long? Yes, and your point would be? Then other maidens, like my clients, didn't have, the, didn't have a fair chance to get to know your son, did they? Each girl had a chance to make a good first impression. Cinderella was the lasting impression. In spite of her rather abrupt exit, my son's game's completely taken with him, and that means I can retire. Uh, I mean to say, we're also thrilled that the prince has chosen a bride. At long last. <coughs> but, how, but how disappointing for the rest of the maidens in the crowd whose hopes were dashed that evening as they watched Cinderella take over the party and leave them all in the cold. No further questions.
next witness. I call Lucy Four to the stand. Lucifer? No, no, Lucy Four. We went over this already, remember? The fourth cat named Lucy. Lucy One, Two, and Three ran away. Please. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you, Brothers Grimm? Yes. Now, Lucy Fort, isn't it true that Cinderella's dog, Brando, tormented you endlessly and she did nothing to stop it? <laughs> Just answer the question, please. Yes. And didn't he try to prevent you from doing your job as a cat? Didn't he try to rescue the very mice you were supposed to be catching? Objection, Your Honor. Lucy Four is a cat. We can't take testimonies of animals in the court of law. Objection sustained. There's no... She's right. This is no kangaroo court. The witness may be seated. You may call your next witness. I'd like to call the three mice to the stand. They're not blind, are they? Different mice, Your Honor. Good. I don't believe in blind justice. But you don't pass your lab enough here if you don't want them. Objection, Your Honor. We already said no animals could testify. Nobody can understand them. Objection sustained. There's no way we can know for sure what the mice really said. The jury will disrespect, uh, disrupt. Oh, it's all right, Your Honor. I'll translate for you. I squeak fluent mouse. Oh, well, in that case, I'll allow it. Overruled. Objection, Your Honor. Can you do that? I hope so, ma'am. You see, oh, well. How's that? I'm a bit squeamish when it comes to the... Come on now, spit it out. Time's a wasting. I'm afraid of mice. Oh, well, <laughs> that changes everything. Your Honor! I mean, er, that changes nothing. Buck up. The mice won't touch you, will you now? Okay. Do you swear to squeak the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help your brother scream. Squeak, squeak! Squeak, squeakity, squeakum, squeak a doo squeaker. Squeak, squeak! I asked them if it was true that the stepsisters were mean to Cinderella. They said yes, that they were mean and lazy to Cinderella. They witnessed the cruel treatment every day. Objection, Your Honor. How do we know that's what the mice really said? Objection to sand. There's no way we can know for sure what the mice really said. The jury will disrespect, uh, disrupt. I forgot the last testimony. The mice can return to their holes. But your honor, I can assure you. That's enough. Call your next witness. I call Griselda and Portobello to the stand. <laughs> Beat you. That's not fair. Oh, only because you pushed me. Place your right hand on the book, please. Ha, beat you. That's not fair. You were closer. Mom, order in the court. Now, now, temper, temper. Girls, behave. Yes, yes mother. mother. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you, brothers Grimm? Yes, ma'am. Now, girls, isn't it true that Cinderella had to do all of your chores on a regular basis? Yes, we have a rare disease that renders us unable to do chores. Yes, a horrible allergy to household cleaners. We're environmentally sensitive. That's not true. They're lazy. <laughs> you see? So you would do your part if you could, but you have no other choice than to ask Cinderella, who is part of your family, to help you in your hour of need? Precisely. And she complained about that. As if it's our fault we're sick. Tell us about the night of the ball. 
It was awful. She stole our beads and sashes. She tried to pretend they were hers. We knew they were ours and took them right off her. The little thief. Who knew she had a fairy godmother hanging around? Yeah, that old witch, she's probably who made us sick. No further questions. Your witness? Isn't it true that you stole the beads and sashes that Cinderella was wearing? We weren't using them that night, but we never said she could use them. Hmm, so you're environmentally sensitive, are you? What happens when you try to, say, scrub a bathtub? It's awful. Terrible. We break out the pain and agony. I know the pain of acne can be a problem, but... Not acne, agony. I don't think you'll break it at all. I think you made it up so you can make poor Cinderella here your slave. Am I right? Ladies and gentlemen of the court, I submit to you that this is, all, this is all an act. There's no reason at all for these two lazy girls to dump all their chores onto Cinderella. No further questions. You both can be seated. Next witness. I call to the stand the fairy godmother. Now, you are Cinderella's fairy godmother. Please tell the court the conditions you found her in when you came into her life. It was atrocious. She was buried in housework, wearing rags, and not even given a room of her own to sleep in. She had only a bed by the fireplace. If it weren't for those animals she was friends with, she had no friends at all. How any mother could allow such a sweet child to win such a squalor is beyond me. And what did you do to help her? I made sure she would go to the ball. I knew once she'd be there, she'd be able to win over the prince. I gave her everything she needed to be the prettiest girl there. Without your assistance, where would Cinderella would probably be today? She had never made it to the ball and would still be living in that squalor and enduring the daily abuse of her stepfamily. Thank you. No further questions. I have some questions. You said you gave Cinderella everything she needed to go to the ball. How did you do all of this? I'm a fairy after all. I made sure her housework was done. I gave her a coach, horses, a footman, and a driver. And I gave her slippers and a dress unlike anything anyone has ever seen before. I was quite proud of that part, actually. And how did you do all of this? With my magic wand, of course. Now where did I put that silly thing? Ah, here it is. Then it was through magic that Cinderella, that Cinderella was able to go to the ball. Without your, magic, we, with, without your magic, we have no way of knowing if the prince would have fallen for her or not, do we? I had nothing to the girl herself. I simply gave her proper clothes and transportation for the evening and saw to her that her chores were done. Are you sure that's all you did? Pardon me? Oh, I know all about you, Bop the Alakazoo. Don't take that tone with me. I'll bop you and your Alakazoo. Judge, this is a hostile witness, and she needs to be removed from the court. What? I haven't done anything to you yet. You aren't hostile? I'll show you hostile. Order in the court! Ma'am, place the wand on the floor and back away slowly. Don't you tell me what to do, little nipper. You young whippersnappers need to learn to respect your elders. Now, now, you're excited. Here, take this solid. It'll even out those mood swings. I don't want you to it. Oh, what were the words of that spell? You stay away from me, both of you. Security, security, help, security. We are security. Madam, I find you in contempt of court. Security, take her to the slammer. You may call your next witness. 
I have no more witnesses, Your Honor. Then you may call your next witness. I'm done too, Your Honor. Of course, I knew that. Well then, closing statements. As it is easy to see, several, several crimes have been committed by the Step family against poor Cinderella. All the pain and abuse we spoke of has been proven by the testimonies of the witnesses here today. Just because Cinderella married well does not mean that the years of suffering endured at the hands of her stepfamily are suddenly not a crime. Child abuse is crime, neglect is crime, emotional torment is crime. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of the jury, there is no other option today but to find in favor of Cinderella. We have proven that Cinderella is no more than a spoiled child. She was unwilling to help her ailing stepsisters with chores and was a constant problem to her poor widowed stepmother. People like her would be eaten alive in the real world, but she was lucky enough to marry the prince, which enabled her to continue to torment my clients. She, she kept German and Ronis in the house knowing how sickly her stepsisters were and used magic to win over the prince. Cinderella has had her story told and retold, glamorized by Hollywood professionals time and again. My clients didn't have the ability to get their side of the story out until today. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of the jury, don't let a spoiled princess continue to tell you how to think. Don't be fooled again. You must free my long-suffering clients today by releasing the Step family and finding Cinderella guilty as charged. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, now that you have heard both testimonies, it's your turn to choose a side. When I count to three, if you are in, think the Step family is correct in their story, yell at Step family. If you are in favor of Cinderella, yell at Cinderella. Ready? One, two, three. Cinderella! Cinderella has one. <laughs> Daughters, it's very important to control your lower pulses. In front of the judge, anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of the jury. Now, thank you for coming to do your civic duty today. This concludes the trial of Fairytale Courtroom.